Today we are going to discuss about Gilbert multiplier cell. The Gilbert multiplier cell is a modification of the emitter coupled cell and this allows four quadrant multiplication. Two cross coupled emitter coupled pairs in series connection with an emitter coupled pair form the structure of Gilbert multiplier cell and that is shown in this diagram. And here we can see these two forms the cross coupled emitter coupled pairs and that is in series with another emitter coupled pair. And here this V1 and V2 are our input voltages and the differential output current delta I is proportional to the product of V1 and V2 and that differential output current delta I is equal to IL1 minus IL2. Then to derive the equations for IL1 and IL2 we need to write equations for these collector currents IC1 to IC6. So first we are going to find the equations for these collector currents IC1 to IC6. To write these collector current equations we need to consider each emitter coupled transistor pairs separately. So first consider this emitter coupled transistor pair formed by using these transistors Q3 and Q4 and its collector currents are IC3 and IC4. We have already studied to write the equations for these currents in our previous class for analog multiplier. You can go through that video class to get clear idea about how we can write these equations. Okay, then when we consider this emitter coupled transistor pair, here in the place of IEE, here we have IC1. Okay, and the differential input to this emitter coupled transistor pair is V1. And we can see the positive of V1 is connected to base of Q3 and the negative of V1 is connected to base of Q4. Hence in the equation of IC3 that exponential term will be negative and in the equation of IC4 that exponential term will be positive. Let's consider that equations. IC3 will be equal to IC1 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus V1 by Vt and IC4 is equal to IC1 divided by 1 plus e raised to V1 by Vt because when we consider this emitter coupled transistor pair in the place of that biasing current IEE here we have the current IC1 so in the numerator here IC1 will come and these are our equations 17 and 18 and similarly we can write the equations for IC5 and IC6 for this emitter coupled transistor pair. When we consider this emitter coupled transistor pair formed by using transistors Q5 and Q6, here also that differential input voltage is V1. And here we can see the positive terminal of V1 is connected to base of Q6 and the negative terminal of V1 is connected to base of Q5. And hence in the equation of IC5 that exponential term will be positive and in the equation of IC6 that exponential term will be negative. And here in the place of that biasing current IEE here we have the current IC2. Hence our equation IC5 will be IC5 is equal to IC2 divided by 1 plus e raised to V1 by Vt and IC6 is equal to IC2 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus V1 by Vt and these are our equations 19 and 20. And now consider our third emitter coupled transistor pair here the differential input is V2 and here we can see the positive terminal of V2 is connected to base of Q1 and the negative terminal of V2 is connected to base of Q2 and here the bias current is IEE. Hence we will get IC1 is equal to IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V2 by Vt and IC2 is equal to IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to V2 by Vt and these are our equations 21 and 22. Now we are going to substitute this equation 21 in our equations 17 and 18. That means in that equation 17 and 18 for IC1 we will substitute this IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V2 divided by Vt. Okay. And our equation 17 plus this one IC3 is equal to IC1 divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V1 by Vt and here for this IC1 
substitute i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v2 by vt. Hence, we will get this ic3 is equal to i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt into 1 plus e raised to minus v2 by vt. Let's consider that equation. So, when we substitute for that ic1 in equation 17, we will get ic3 is equal to i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt into 1 plus e raised to minus v2 by vt. Okay. Similarly, substitute our equation 21 in equation 18. Okay. And our equation 18 was this one ic4 is equal to ic1 divided by 1 plus e raised to v1 by vt and here for this ic1 substitute i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v2 by vt hence we will get ic4 is equal to i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to v1 by vt into 1 plus e raised to minus v2 by vt let's consider that equation so, we will get IC4 is equal to IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to V1 by VT into 1 plus E raised to minus V2 by VT. Okay. And these are our equations 23 and 24. Then similarly substitute our equation 22 in equations 19 and 20. That means in the equations 19 and 20 for IC2 substitute this value. Then our equation 19 was this one ic5 is equal to ic2 divided by 1 plus e raised to v1 by vt and here for this ic2 substitute iee divided by 1 plus e raised to v2 by vt and hence we will get ic5 is equal to iee divided by 1 plus e raised to v1 by vt into 1 plus e raised to v2 by vt let's consider that equation so ic5 is equal to I e e divided by 1 plus e raised to v1 by vt into 1 plus e raised to v2 by vt and that is our equation 25 and similarly substitute this equation 22 in equation 20 and our equation 20 plus this one ic6 is equal to ic2 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt and here for this ic2 substitute i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to v2 by vt and hence we will get ic6 is equal to i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt into 1 plus e raised to v2 by vt okay and that is our equation 26 ic6 is equal to i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt into 1 plus e raised to v2 by vt now we are going to calculate the differential output current delta i. Our differential output current delta i is IL1 minus IL2. Consider that figure again. Here we can see that delta i is the difference between these currents IL1 and IL2. And in this figure we can see IL1 is equal to this IC3 plus IC5. Okay. And IL2 is equal to this IC6 plus IC4. Hence, we can write that delta i equation as delta i is equal to IL1 minus IL2 and that is equal to IC3 plus IC5 minus IC4 plus IC6. Then we can modify this equation as delta i is equal to IC3 minus IC6 minus of IC4 minus IC5. Okay. And this is our equation 27. And now we are going to substitute the equations for this IC3, IC6, IC4 and IC5 that we calculated earlier. Okay. So we are going to substitute these equations 23 to 26 in our equation 27. Okay. Then consider this first term. Here it is IC3 minus IC6. When we consider the equations for IC3 and IC6, in that IC3 and IC6 equation, this IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V1 by Vt is common. Okay. So we can take this IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V1 by Vt outside and we can write IEE divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt into 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v2 by vt minus 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to v2 by vt. Hence this 
IC3 minus IC6 term becomes IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V1 by VT into 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V2 by VT minus 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to V2 by VT. Now consider this second term IC4 minus IC5. When we consider that IC4 and IC5 equations, in that equation this IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to V1 by VT term is common. Hence we can take that term outside. Hence that IC4 minus IC5 becomes IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to V1 by VT into 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V2 by VT minus 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to V2 by VT. Hence this IC4 minus IC5 term becomes IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to V1 by VT into 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v2 by vt minus 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to v2 by vt. Okay, So, we will get that delta i equation as i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt into 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v2 by vt minus 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to v2 by vt minus IEE divided by 1 plus E raised to V1 by VT into 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V2 by VT minus 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to V2 by V2. Then we know this 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to minus V2 by VT minus 1 divided by 1 plus E raised to V2 by VT can be written as tan H V2 by 2 VT. Okay, the hyperbolic tangent function of V2 by 2 VT. So, this term is replaced by using tan h v2 by 2 vt and here also we can replace this term by using tan h v2 by 2 vt. Hence we will get this delta i is equal to i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt into tan h v2 by 2 vt minus i e e divided by 1 plus e raised to v1 by vt into tan h v2 by 2 vt. Now in these two terms i e e into tan h v2 by 2 vt term is common. So we can take that term outside and hence we will get i e e into tan h v2 by 2 vt into 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt minus 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to v1 by vt. Now this 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus v1 by vt minus 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to v1 by vt term can be replaced by using tan h v1 by 2 vt. Okay? Hence we will get that delta i is equal to i e e into tan h v2 by 2 vt into tan h v1 by 2 vt or we can rewrite this one as delta i is equal to i e e into tan h v1 by 2 vt into tan h v2 by 2 vt. Then when this v1 and v2 are very small, this tan h v1 by 2 vt can be approximated as v1 by 2 vt and this tan h v2 by 2 vt can be approximated as v2 by 2 vt. Hence we can approximate this delta i equation as i e e into v1 by 2 vt into v2 by 2 vt. So when this v1 and v2 are very small, the Gilbert cell shown in our figure can be used as a 4 quadrant analog multiplier with the use of current to voltage converter because this delta i current is proportional to the product of that inputs v1 and v2. So when we convert this current to its corresponding voltage, that voltage will be proportional to the product of these inputs V1 and V2. Okay? Hence that Gilbert multiplier cell shown in this figure 5 can be used as a 4 quadrant analog multiplier with the use of current to voltage converter. And we know the output voltage V out can be generated from delta I 
by using two equal valued resistors connected to VCC and by sending the IL1 through one resistor and IL2 through other resistor. That means here we need to connect that RC resistance to VCC point and here also we need to connect an RC resistance to VCC point. Then by passing that IL1 current through this RC resistance and by passing this IL2 current through that RC resistance here, here we will get a voltage which is proportional to that delta I current or that is proportional to the product of V1 and V2. Now this circuit can also be used as a modulator. A modulator or a mixer is a circuit with two inputs namely carrier input and modulating input and one modulated output. A linear response is required only for the modulating input since the carrier is usually an AC signal with constant amplitude. So this multiplier can also be used as a modulator if one of the inputs is very large and the second input is very small. Hence for that small input that tan hx value will be equal to x. Okay. Then the transistors operated by the large signal input act as switches. This effectively multiplies the small input signal by a square wave. Hence this mode of operation acts as a modulator and these are called synchronous modulators and they find applications in signal processing, demodulation and phase detection.